Hello friends, this video on alternating currents part 31 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 30 before going ahead with part 31. So let us look at the first problem. It says that a series LCR circuit with resistance 20 ohms Inductance 1.5 Henry and capacitance 35 microfarads is connected to a variable frequency 200 volt AC supply. So let us suppose this is the LCR circuit. This is the resistance, inductance, capacitance and this is the AC supply. So what are the values that are given here? Resistance as 20 ohms, inductance as 1.5 Henry, capacitance as 35 microfarads that is 35 into 10 to the power minus 6 farads and it is connected to a variable frequency 200 volts AC supply. So this is the AC supply. So when the frequency of the supply equals the natural frequency of the circuit, what is the average power transferred to the circuit in one complete cycle? Now please note here it says that when the frequency of the supply equals the natural frequency of the circuit. What happens when this happens? What happens when the frequency of the supply becomes equal to the natural frequency of the circuit? When this happens, resonance occurs. Right? And what happens at resonance? We know that at resonance, the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance becomes equal. Right? So the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance will cancel out each other. So what would be the impedance of this circuit? So impedance of this circuit that is Z will be equal to root over R square plus XC minus XL whole square. Now in this case XC and XL are equal so this term will be equal to 0. So the net impedance of the circuit is equal to the resistance of the circuit. So now we have to calculate the average power transferred in this circuit in one complete cycle. So what is average power? Average power is nothing but EM. I m divided by 2 into cos phi where cos phi is the power factor. Now in this case since it is at resonance I also talked about resonance in the previous slide. So phi will be equal to 0 because here only resistance plays a role and in case of resistive circuit the voltage and the current are in phase. So here E m is nothing but V m right. So this becomes equal to V m I m divided by 2. So this is the average power. So this we can write now what is the value of what is Vm? Vm is nothing but the peak value of current right. But in this problem we are given the RMS value. So, so let me solve it here. So the average power becomes equal to Vm divided by root 2 into Im divided by root 2 because here Vm and Im are the peak values of voltage and current. So this becomes equal to Vrms into Irms. Now what is Vrms? It is given as 200 volts. So this will be 200 and what is Irms? This will be equal to Vrms divided by R. So this will be equal to 200 into 200 divided by R is 20. So this comes out to be 2000 watts. So this would be the average power transferred to the circuit in one complete cycle. Now let us look at the next problem. It says that a radio can tune over the frequency range of a portion of broadcast band. 800 mega. 800 kilohertz to 1200 kilohertz. So what is the frequency range? That means this is the frequency range which the antenna catches signals from. I told you right, the antenna of the radio, it will catch signals from multiple stations. So the frequency range is mentioned here. It is from 
800 kilohertz that is 800 into 10 to the power 3 hertz to 1200 kilohertz that is 1200 into 10 to the power 3 hertz so if its lc circuit has an effective inductance of 200 micro henry that means the inductance of the circuit is 200 micro henry which is 200 into 10 to the power minus 6 henry what must be the range of its variable capacitor so we have to calculate the range of the capacitor so maybe the capacitor will range from some value c1 to c2 so we have to calculate this value of c1 and c2 now we know that tuning of radio the radio will get tuned at resonant frequencies right because you will turn the when you turn the knob of the radio this variable capacitor will keep changing its value right so that means tuning of the radio and it will when it will uh, be co corresponding to any one of these frequencies then your amplitude will become maximum and you will be here able to hear the songs of that particular stations right so that means tuning of the radio occurs at resonant frequencies right and how do we determine resonant frequencies resonant frequencies is determined by 1 by root over lc right so this is angular frequency angular resonant frequency so this can be written as 2 pi nu naught is equal to 1 by root over lc or we can say that the resonant frequency is given by 1 by 2 pi root over lc so now let us try to find out the lower limit of the capacitor's range so let us consider the lower range so what would be the lower range the lower range of frequency is nu 1 so this nu 1 will be equal to 1 by 2 pi root over lc1 so from this we can say that c1 is equal to 1 by C1 will be equal to 1 by 4 pi square L into nu 1 square. Right? So this would be the value of the uh, lower range of the capacitor. Right? So this will be 1 divided by 4 into pi square into L into nu 1 square. That is 800 into 10 to the power 3 square. So this value of C1 comes out to be 197.7 picofarad. So this is the lower range of the variable capacitor. Now let us calculate the upper range. So for the upper range it would be nu2 which is the upper range of the frequency is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over LC2. So from this we will get C2 is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi square L into nu 2 square. So putting the values here we will get 1 divided by 4 into 3.14 whole square into L that is equal to 200 into 10 to the power minus 6 into nu 2 square that is 1200 into 10 to the power 3 whole square right so this value comes out to be 87.8 picofarads so that means the range of the variable capacitor would be from 197.7 picofarads to 87.8 picofarads. This would be the range of the variable capacitor. Right? So now let us look at another problem. So now we will look at problems on transformers. The problem says a power transmission line feeds input power at 2300 volts to a step down transformer. Let us suppose this is a transformer. So this is the primary coil and this is a step down transformer. So the secondary coil would be lesser. 
So this is the secondary coil. So it says that the input power, so that is the input power is given as input power at 2300 volts to a step down transformer. That means this is V input is given as 2300 volts. So input voltage is nothing but the voltage across the primary coil, right? So this is the uh, input voltage with its primary windings having 4000 turns. That is number of turns on the primary coil is equal to 4000. What should be the number of turns in the secondary that means ns you have to calculate to get an out to get output power at 230 volts. That means the output voltage or the secondary voltage is equal to 230 volts. Now we already know that power I mean voltage across primary by voltage across secondary is equal to number of turns across primary by number of turns across secondary. So therefore number of turns on the secondary coil would be equal to NP that is number of turns in primary multiplied by voltage across secondary by voltage across primary. So this comes out to be 4000 into 230 divided by 2300. So this comes out to be 400. That means the secondary coil should have 400 turns around itself. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.